Okay, so it's starting to record. So it's already started. Now I'm going to restart again with the rest of the lecture about SOAR SCTT. Okay, now we're going to come back to the effects of pH on plants as well as nutrient ability and also the toxicity. So I'm going to talk about the rest of the three together because they're actually the same thing. The impact of pH, too high is not good, too low is also not too good. Uh, and also we have two things to address too, on plants and also to safety, human health. So. Now to begin with, effects of pH on plants. Now you may have learned also earlier that some plants actually grow well on a certain pH. Well, sometimes this uh, suitable pH depends on what kind of crop that they have because the nutrient that they want, uh, that, that they require, also quite different. Now at low pH, maybe these plants require uh, some nutrients that's only available at a very low pH and therefore they thrive. But majority of the plants that I can say to you thrive at the pH between 6 to 7. So these are the suitable pH because at this pH they say to be not too acidic and not too alkaline. Yeah, surprisingly. You, all, you, you, you always think that acidic pH is always bad. Yeah, in, 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 in some way, yes, it is true. Low pH is worse than high pH, I would say. Because at low pH, you can do more damage. But at, old, but high, but at high pH also, it's not really good. After this, I'm going to explain to you why this is so. Okay. Now, like we have learned earlier, organic soil. In organic soil, uh, the cross prefer a pH between 5.5 to 6. Now, in organic soil, I would say this is probably the usual pH but it could vary a lot. Now this uh, acidity could go down all the way to 3 point something. Yeah, some peat soil can be that acidic, 3 point something. But if you're talking about uh, some soils with high organic matter, I think this is the right value. Now wood plants are example of acid loving plants, prefer to be in acidic soil. Now there are two, there are two reasons. One, the wood plants, either they love it, some actually prefers the acidic soil. But I would have to say that if the plants can choose, it will not going to pick the acidic soil. Because why? At acidic conditions, usually they are heavy metals. So if you're the plants, you don't like heavy metals, guys. So that's the, that's the thing. However, why wood plants can survive in acidic soil not because they love it, but because they can survive. You see, wood plants, they're very sturdy. They have high tolerance. Very good example. The forest plants, I mean the forest wood plants, the trees, the large trees in forests, these, these trees are very sturdy. They have been there for the past hundreds and thousands of years. So some slight acidity in the soil will not going to harm them. They can take it. Another example is, the oil palm trees. See, oil palm trees, if the soil becomes acidic up to pH 4, the farmers are not going to do anything because oil palm trees, they can take it without the loss or a decrease of uh, agricultural productivity. The oil palm trees can give you the oil palm as much as it is before, so no harm done. So usually the trees, uh, the large trees can take that can can take the small effect, small impact from the acidity. Now, except at pH extreme, so extreme pH, I would say, uh, at extreme pH, say pH three or pH eleven above or less than pH three, uh, too much of hydronium, too much of H plus or too much of hydroxide will be. Uh, a, a damaging factor, I would say. A factor that can impact the growth and sometimes may poison the plants as well. So the further slides we're going to go through is going to see some of these plants, small vegetables or maybe some, uh, some, 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 some crops like blueberry. Blueberry is one of the most interesting ones because if you look at the pH range that they prefer, not that they can take it, they prefer. Blueberries is not in Malaysia because it's obviously temperate, uh, I mean, uh, crops from temperate countries. 
these plants actually thrive. Not, not that they can survive, they actually grow really well at low pH. I mean, for some reason that we're not so sure, maybe because this is how they survive. And in fact, blueberries also taste very sour. Yeah, probably that's not connected, but this is how some plants loves to stay in the acidic pH. But if you look at the rest of it, the rest of it usually thrive at a pH between 5.5 and 6.5, as you can see right here. Some of them may be higher, but slightly higher is not different. So these are the normal pH, the normal pH that agriculture can take place. They can take much less than that, but not beyond that. So these are the range. They survive really well, and they can take some slightly more extreme pH. Now, what, what we're going to discuss next is why so? Why low pH is bad? Why high pH also is bad? Okay, this is why. Now, I think I'm not going to read you all this slide, and I'm going to take you to... Okay, let's, let, 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 let me sum up this slide. Okay. Now, what this slide is trying to tell you is that if your soil have a pH outside of the suitable pH, some way and somehow, one or maybe more than one of the elements in your soil is not available by the plants. Not available means the plant cannot absorb this element as a nutrient. Yeah, if it's too high, some nutrients may be lost. Too low also, some nutrients cannot be absorbed by plants. Now, I don't want to waste too much time on this slide because I think the next few ones is more important. Not this one, it's this one. So what you can see on this slide is actually a diagram that shows you the availability, the availability of elements with increasing pH. So from left, pH 4, towards pH 10, to the right, the far right. And you can see that these elements are not available all the same way, isn't it? At some points, some of these elements, they are very thin. Some points, some of these elements may be very thick. Thick nitrogen and phosphorus, for example. At very high pH, nitrogen is not available. However, for phosphorus, it is available. You see, I uh, actually can explain further, but we'll have to take another class. It's called in organic chemistry class. So I think I'll just leave it as at, it is. But the message that I need you to remember from this slide is that at suitable pH, which is right here, between six to seven, between six to seven, these are the pH range where you can see majority of the elements they are available. So they are thick, isn't it? At this region between pH six and seven, they are very thick. So these are the nutrients that are important for plant growth, except for one, right? which is aluminium. You see, aluminium, it's majority, I mean, most of the plants do not require aluminium. So aluminium is not a nutrient. Aluminium is poison, a toxic element for plants. So, Aluminium only becomes very thick at extremely acidic pH, which is pH 4. So that's why I said to you earlier, acidic soil can do more damage because not only at acidic pH, you don't have nutrient, you also have toxic element. So it's like a double whammy, people say. So not only you don't have enough nutrient, you also have toxic material here. Yeah, so acid is always bad. Now, alkaline is not always good as well. Now, even though the color gives you the false impression that green color is nice, is green. No, not really. Because at high pH, I'm going to pick a few examples. Yeah, one of them is nitrogen. Nitrogen at high pH, it's not available because at high pH, nitrogen becomes ammonia and it becomes a gas. So nitrogen, in fact, is one of the major element nutrient, uh, nutrient elements for plant growth. Without nitrogen, plant cannot grow at all. Yeah. So it's coming back to between six and seven. That is the 
uh, the best pH in order to allow this nutrient to be absorbed by plants. So next part is we're going to talk about pH and element toxicity. So just now we are talking about aluminium. So I think this becomes a non-issue. Uh, well, I actually picked up this so-called evidence. So this is actually a journal article published by a Malaysian UPM scientist. And they actually went to Merbok Kedah and they conduct some studies because at Merbok Kedah uh, is actually a, a paddy field. At Merbok Kedah is a paddy field and the, their problem in Merbok is not because the, the paddy cannot grow. The paddy can grow. However, the soil is acidic. The paddy can grow very tall, but it doesn't give you the rice. The paddy can grow really tall, but no rice. What's the problem? This one. Because at acidic condition, the paddy seems to be surviving, but it doesn't give the crop yield so much because of this aluminium toxicity. So toxicity also may, in other word, in other way, may affect the plant growth. And also in this case, in Merbo, it does not give them too much of rice. Okay, next one is pH and soil organism. Now, this one is talking about the impact to soil organism due to extreme pH, I would say. Uh, okay, let's see. Oh, yeah. Now, this slide actually talks about the balance, the balance of soil organism. Now, we probably haven't learned about soil organism, but we will. We will maybe next week, and we're going to talk about what's the soil. But, but before that, in essence, majority of the soil organism consists of microbes. Now, in microbes, there are various of microbes. It could be yeast, could be virus, could be bacteria, could be uh, fungi. But okay, it's quite safe to say that in soil, majority of the microbes consists of bacteria and also fungus. And guess what? These two live differently. Why I say lives differently is because bacteria loves acidic environment yeah bacteria likes acidic environment whereas alkali uh, whereas fungi is the opposite fungi survive best in alkaline condition so let's say if you tune or you change the soil ph at the same time you may also change the balance of soil microorganism is it good or bad i don't know because it depends on what you want to do with the soil but if you're talking about agriculture, now this one is quite tedious because you cannot have too much of microbes or you know you cannot have too much of fungi. Because when we talk about these two, although this soil micro, microorganism is good in general, good in general means they break down the organism and they release nutrients from organic matter, some tiny bit of the soil microorganism may also cause disease. See, uh, earlier when we talked about soil moisture, if you still remember, too much of moisture caused excessive growth of fungi. Now, in this case, there's another factor that can increase the growth of fungi, which is going to alkaline. If you switch to alkaline condition, more fungi will grow. And this fungi may be pathogens pathogenic to the plants so yeah and uh, let's not forget also some of these microbes like uh, nitrogen fixing nitrification these are bacteria you see like i said to you just now if the soil becomes alkaline nitrogen cannot be fixed because why because if you tune the soil to become alkaline bacteria usually cannot grow and therefore, nitrogen cannot be fixed because without nitrogen fixing bacteria, no nitrogen can be fixed into the soil. So that is another reason also why uh, nitrogen at high pH, usually they're very low. Now, you have all these problems. High soil pH is problem. Low soil pH is even a bigger problem. What do we do? So the next last two points is how do we solve the problem? Now, there is such thing called liming. Now, liming is actually to put lime into soil. Now, lime in this case is not limau. It's actually batu kapo, limestone. Yeah? 
So limey material, there could be a lot of things, but they have one thing in general. This material, they are alkaline. They could be majority of them contain calcium. It could be calcium carbonate. It could be something else. There are many materials, minerals that can do the same job. But ultimately, their job is to neutralize the acidic soil, which means they are bringing up extremely low soil pH. So in this case, one of the soil pH that have problem is peat soil, apart from the, the sulfur-containing soil. Sulfur-containing soil is also is acidic. Peat soil also is acidic. Now, how do we solve this problem? Just put limestone. But of course, easier said than done. Right? So how this is done? Now, uh, of course, one of the benefits of liming is to bring back the neutrality of the soil. And because of that, it also going to solve the, the problem of the availability of nutrient. Like I said, what's the best pH between 6 and 7? If it's too acidic, you put a little bit of limestone, not too much, just a little bit, just enough to bring it back to pH 6 or pH 7. And with that, then you solve all the problem of the nutrient and also the toxicity. And guess what? Last point. Look at last point. Last two points. Lime, limestone is calcium carbonate. And calcium is actually a macronutrient. Not as much as nitrogen, potassium, or phosphorus, but calcium also is, is needed quite a lot in large amount by plants. So calcium is a nutrient from limestone. And another type of uh, limestone we call ground magnesium limestone. Ground magnesium limestone, or in other words, we call it GML. Now GML is available only in one place in Malaysia, and that is Arau Perlis. So the whole Malaysia, only Arau Perlis have GML. Why this GML is so important? Because GML contains one more nutrient, magnesium. So by putting GML, they're supplementing the soil with calcium as well as magnesium at the same time. And trust me, any plants that have more magnesium grows really, really well. Yeah. So this is what happens. Now, I think this one, having the same name, this is the same guy from the earlier publication, but this is another paper. Now this guy using limestone to fertilize and also to neutralize the same acid sulfate soil in Lobo. And there you can see, with more application of lime, it actually can increase the amount of calcium in the soil. And therefore, with increase of calcium, it increases the yield, the yield of rice. So you see, when you have enough nutrients, the yield of the rice also can be improved gradually. And these are the materials. Like I said to you, there are many ways we can put lime materials into the soil. The majority of them is limestone because this is what this is quite common. This is quite common, especially when you go to Ipopera, you can see hills and hills of whitish uh, limestone hills. This is what they get. Uh, yeah. I think maybe Taipusa would not be mistaken. So, yeah, another thing, you go to Taipusa also, you can see the same limestone hill. Well, that one, nobody can, can touch it because it's a, it's, a, it's, a what? it's a shrine, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, another part is dolomite. Dolomite uh, also contains magnesium. So, there's another thing for ground magnesium limestone. This is dolomite. They are the same except that dolomite contains magnesium. Burnt lime is the charred uh, product from limestone. Limestone, if you burn it at 900 degrees Celsius, you produce burnt lime. Now, burnt lime, if you comparing the chemical properties between limestone, limestone is calcium carbonate. Burnt lime is calcium oxide. So, yeah, once you burn the lime, essentially, you're removing the carbon dioxide and it becomes calcium oxide. Why calcium oxide is better? Because it is even stronger alkaline material than calcium carbonate. And another benefit of burn lime is that it dissolves readily in water. So when, they, when this burn lime is mixed with water, it becomes hydrated lime. And hydrated lime, the chemical formula, calcium hydroxide, both of which is quite popular. Quite popular because they readily dissolve in water and when they dissolve in water, they become very strong alkaline. Which means you don't need too much of this one. You need a little 
in order to neutralize the soil. And guess what? It's even much more easier to administer. Because when you come to calcium carbonate, this one relatively not soluble in water. What do you do? You just tabo again. You tabo on the surface of the soil. It cannot go deep in the soil, but hydrated lime can because it's liquid. Hydrated lime is actually a liquid. What you need to do is you just pump. Pump this light hydrated lime deep into the soil and you also can neutralize subsurface soil, soils that are deeper in, in a soil horizon. And I think this one, I don't need to talk too much because neutralization, I think you should know what is that. Total acidity, what is that? Active acidity is due to H+. Um, the potential acidity is due to the exchange. Now, I think this one is a little bit more complicated. Um, yeah, I think I need to explain a little bit about this one. Because when you talk about acidic soil, yeah, I will say majority of that is due to the presence of this H plus, hydronium. Hydronium is the major reason why the soil pH drops down. However, the presence of other elements may also cause the same thing. Now we're talking about uh, Al3 plus and one more, Fe3 plus. The presence of these two ions, Al3 plus or Fe3 plus, may also cause acidity of soil now why they come under potential acidity so you see a difference active acid as acidity is due to h plus potential acidity is due to the presence of this one al3 plus and fe3 plus because if you know if you remember chemistry al3 plus and fe3 plus is actually a very strong lewis acid okay i think i've explained enough if you want to know what why why this why why al3 plus and fe3 plus are acid you can search lewis acid and then it will explain everything okay now next how life works well neutralization calcium comes in neutralize calcium dissolve in water you have uh, oh minus and then you neutralize with h plus blah 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 i think this one no need to explain like that okay. and this is how it works when you have like calcium hydroxide calcium hydroxide or the hydrated lime comes inside it will neutralize the h plus and it become water as you can see right here so where does the calcium goes to the calcium will going to attach itself into the soil particle replacing the h plus and therefore it increase the ph now, what about Al3 plus? Now, Al3 plus is removed, so called removed or eliminated or reduced by attaching itself to the OH minus over here. So, this is how Al3 plus becomes neutralized, so called neutralized. And if essentially is not neutralized, but yeah. So, these are how hydrated lime remove al3 plus as well as h plus same thing over here in which this is due to calcium carbonate the way they work is almost the same except that carbon dioxide is we re, uh, is released here because why this is calcium carbonate and after neutralization you see carbon dioxide the rest of it is uh, more or less the same and Bear with me, this is the last part, acidifying the soil. So, strange, yeah? I told you just now that acidic soil is much worse than alkaline soil. But somehow people need to acidify the soil. Because you know what? Uh, alkaline soil also is also a problem soil. Because as we learned earlier, alkaline soil will have one problem. The nutrients is not released. So yeah. In order to have access to these elements, I know some of these elements, you might thought that they are toxic, but they are micronutrient. You cannot lock this element away. Otherwise, the plant also might suffer. So that is why, if the soil is too alkaline, some way you still have to tune the pH so that it comes back down, at least more suitable, maybe seven. 
maybe six point something between six and seven because at ph6 and seven only this nutrient can be released dissolved in soil moisture and the plants can absorb and with that you have to acidify the soil and it works exactly as how the soil becomes acidic you just put sulfur see you don't need to put sulfuric acid no need, no need you just put sulfur let the air oxidize the soil and there you go you have sulfuric acid and then after that it will dissociate by itself and becomes acid so yeah people do acidify the soil if their soil become alkaline um so i think that is all from me but before i wrap up this lesson i will have to say that among all the cases that you see just now acidic soil and alkaline soil most of the cases of problematic ph of soil usually falls on the acidic side you know why because nowadays we have plenty of pollution so with pollution usually it pushes to the acidic soil not alkaline soil very rarely we have alkaline soil problem um but for some reason for some reason some of the soil due to history or due to prior human activity the soil can become alkaline so coming back to my earlier uh, explanation why a soil can be alkaline maybe the soil have a lot of calcium carbonate yeah it may happen but you see human activities also can increase the soil ph yeah how does that grow? how does that happen there's one example that i want to share with you and it's bauxite mining and processing activity bauxite bauxite as if you still remember in you know, sometimes uh, a few years ago in pahang where you have the red earth being shipped out so the process guys right, once you process all the bauxite you extract all the aluminium the waste from the processing actually is alkaline what ph we are talking about ph 8 not to ph 10. so mining activities also can increase the soil ph but you see there's always something that we can do to soil in order to to meet whatever the objective you want to do to soil especially for agriculture okay i would think i will wrap up with the last point so you see last point acid soil need to be neutralized to neutral ph to avoid among others al toxicity fe and mn toxicity i would like to add some more here it also applies for pb toxicity cd cadmium so your lead your cadmium your mercury whatever the toxic heavy metal comes under here so aluminium is not the only toxic element in the soil but why aluminium is more uh, prominent here because you see all your clays all the clays that we have in the in the soil they are aluminosilicate so this aluminium actually is already in the soil whereas what happened to the lead the cadmium and the mercury these are actually coming from anthropog anthropogenic sources that means some man-made sources like mercury lab the mercury thermometer ah those are the things now to wrap up soil ph is so important because you can alter the ph so that the plants can grow you can also alter the soil ph so that you stop pollution so these are the final points that you need to consider so with that that is the end of my lecture and i will stop the recording right now